Welcome to Popcorn History with the Freeborn County Historical Museum Library and Village. I'm Stephanie Kibler, the director at the museum, along with Risha Lilienthal, coordinator of collections and exhibits, and Reggie Bauer, operations manager and music director at Power 96. We have so many fun and interesting things here at the museum and happening at the museum. Every conversation we have, whether it be around a collection item, an exhibit, or a historic figure, has us popping out ideas. We refer to the these as popcorn moments, hence popcorn history. So the month of March brings us to National Agriculture Month as well as International Women's History Month. Yeah. And as we were talking, we kind of um, popped, popped <laughs> and discovered that there's a tie. Yeah. So I figured I would start with the Atchison Farms, and that is Lisley Forrester Atchison was his name. Lisley is kind of an interesting first name. Have you guys mm. ever heard that name? I, no. I have. You have? Okay. I okay. haven't. Not I, spelled that way or anything like that. It's not a common name, I hear. Um, but he was born on January 20th, 1897, and his bride, Ida, came to Albert Lee with him in 1920, and his dad owned, he was a kind of a business guy in Iowa, and Atchison, he moved in, and he had a farm in Albert Lee, and had just completed his service in the U.S. Army during World War One. which that this is kind of a side pop. Um, Dean Uland came in and did our lecture on... World War I farmers in Freeborn and Mauer County. And we're going to have that up at some point pretty soon. I just wanted to give a little a little teaser, I guess, Ooh. with that. So when we're making popcorn, we don't call it a side pop. We call it a wild <laughs> kernel. Oh, there you oh go. I like that. That's fun. Wild kernel. <laughs> that was a wild kernel. <laughs> All right. Um, so, yeah, be, be aware of that coming into play and seeing that somewhere sometime. But Atchison, again, he, he kind of decided to also be a business guy, kind of like his dad. He had a farm, but he also owned Atchison Lumber Company from the early 1920s into the early 1930s. So about 10 years here in Albert Lee, he had a lumber company. And then he got into what he really wanted to do, which was the Atchison Manufacturing Company, which he started in the 30s. And that became the Lasota Tool Company. And Lasota itself, that name, was made up from syllables of Albert Lee and Minnesota. Oh. So it really is like an Albert Lee business. And at one time, the company had 79 salesmen on the road selling what they called a diversified line of farm tools and light farm equipment directly to the farmer. Holy <laughs> could cow. You, could you sound any more like Moira? <laughs> Oh my from, gosh, oh no. From Shit's Creek. <laughs> I love that show. <laughs> oh no. Um, yes. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, but that, again, that's something they sell directly to the farmer. That's, uh, I think of, I guess, growing up hearing about traveling salesmen, it was always me thinking about a guy on a porch with a shotgun. Like <laughs> chasing him away. Yeah, like get off my lawn. Like you're not wanted here. No I soliciting. Yeah, Can you imagine right? having a shotgun and running with encyclopedias. Oh, no, <laughs> or a Hoover vacuum. I was gonna say oh vacuum cleaner was what I first think about when I hear traveling salesman. Dick Van Dyke portrayed both of those salesmen. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'd never oh. heard of Lasota Tools. Yeah. I that's really cool, and I'm thinking that. There might have to be a, a panel space on our business. Right. Just for that. Cause I mean, again, yeah, that's really yeah. a neat stuff. Yeah, I like that. Um, he was also there during World War II. He stayed. He wasn't a uh, serviceman at that point. Again, he was in World War I. But in 1945, he said that for the business, we haven't everything we want to offer farmers yet. Because, you know, we still had to have food during the war. So there were still farmers no. here. Right? <laughs> But he was wanting to get deep freezers and refrigerators and milk coolers and a lot of larger items. But one item after the war that kind of gained particular attention because uh, people were asking, can these actually be sold to farmers? And Mr. Nelson, who was the general manager of what they called the Farm Gadget Company, Lasota Tools, they called it that. Huh. Um he said, yeah, we sell many of these electric welders to 
farmers. He said electric welding is not so difficult. And with his own welder, the farmer does not have to stop to tear a machine to pieces, take the broken part to town, and wait for it to be welded, which (laughs) may be in a rush time on the farm and in the shop. He just reaches in with his welding rod, and in a few minutes, the machine is on its way again. Hmm. And he said, besides... Many men now on farms have had recent experience in war industries, like in welding. So maybe welding in a shipyard, or they were actually trained in the Army and the Navy. Sure. Hey, I can handle this. I've seen it before. Yeah. Um, When I think electric welder, would that have been... I guess I don't know what those would have looked like back then. Would Would they... I don't think they make welders or like battery operator or anything. I feel like you need a lot more energy than that. So do either of you know... When electricity first came to Albert Lee, off the top of your heads? No. Oh, maybe I could guess, but I have to go back. Well, I could guess when it came to some of the farms. Sure. Because my dad's, when he was a boy, did not have electricity until he was a teenager. Okay. So that would have been in the 19-teens, 1915 to 1920. Really? You... Because, um, you know, where I'm from, back by Hastings, my grandpa said that in, like, the Dakota County area, they didn't get electricity out at their farm until 1938, I think he said. <gasps> wow. So that's, that's interesting to me that you guys got it so, so much well, sooner. Well, maybe I'm wrong. We I just remember he would, he, he'd leave, they'd leave the kerosene lamp burning so he could fall asleep. <laughs> um Was the story my aunt had told. And then it seemed like by the time he was... A teenager, they mm-hmm. had electricity. Sure, didn't have running water though. Oh, I I can't imagine electricity that one. before. <laughs> wow, wow. <laughs> I mean, I suppose the electricity is easier to transport once you have that infrastructure in sure. place. But that's fair. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so where were we? Welding. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, that's all really I had on welding was that it, they were able to do it. Farmers were able to get it. And actually, they were starting to teach it in schools, too, at the time. Hmm. So it's even, you know, even now with the giant combines, the last thing a farmer wants is to have it break down during harvest or planting season and not be able to fix it. Mm -hmm. Yikes. Um, So that, I'm sure, was a popular little tool (laughs) sold by LaSota. Yeah, well, and he, he stayed with that business for long, long time. He retired and his son-in-law took it over. But for a number of years before his death in in 1995 is when he passed, he before that, he spent his time farming and raising his stable of harness horses, which I didn't know what a harness horse As was. As opposed to a regular right. horse? <laughs> and, uh, like, a harness horse isn't ridden. You wouldn't no, ride a harness right. horse. It's um, harness horses. Yeah, well, she knew. She knew. Um, <laughs> Came prepared. They're, they're apparently a, a, it's a kind of racing horse that um, they're standard bred horses that race in a specific gait, which is either pacing or trotting while hauling a two wheeled cart behind them called a sulky or a spider. Hmm. Or a chariot in Roman I know, that's time. what I was wondering. I was like, is this like just a different name for a chariot horse? Like, it really became popular in the 18th century in Europe and the USA. And I think yeah. they were much smaller than a chariot. Oh. I think, I think, I could be wrong, but I think they were a smaller, huh? probably a little bouncier. Sure. <laughs> wow. Yeah, well, he, he would, I know Freeborn County, Albert Lee especially, we talk about our race horse horses or races that's that legend that happened yeah here. we're you gonna know. have the county Del- seat right we're gonna delve into that yeah. one yeah, yeah. Brought that up the first episode <laughs> <laughs> well um he he raced at county and state with the harness horses so not that kind of horse racing but um he also went to santa Ana in california he did tracks on the east coast in chicago he got really into it towards wow. the end of his life and he also enjoyed hunting and fishing. Uh, but his wife, Ida, she she liked the horses. She enjoyed going to the races and stuff. But she really went hardcore with fishing. That's so great because that, um, I, I kind of touch on the fishing. Oh, do you? Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll let you get to it. But um, right after her death, Ida, she bought a cabin in Washington Lake, which is near Dassel, and spent six months of the year fishing. Oh, wow. And then the other six was spent in Albert Lee. 
Wow. Yeah. That's I mean, she was also a, a member. Modern lady. Right. She was like, I love my fishing. I'm going to go. Um, she was also a member of the Navy Hospital here and had been active during um, World War One with the Red Cross. And um, this is also kind of cute. In both uh, Lisley's obituary and her own obituary, she's listed as uh, when she was 92... She was particularly pleased that a piece of their farm ended up being acquired by the Helmer Myrie State Park. Oh. Hmm. So I thought that was really cute. She was particularly pleased. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Well, I, I was curious if we'd had any women who were farmers. Oh, yeah. Here in Fremont County. And I didn't have my hopes real high because I thought <laughs> most of the farms are going to be, it's going to be the husband and the mm-hmm. wife right. might help out. Yeah. Yeah. However, oh. the fabulous Miss Linda Evenson, librarian oh, yes. at the uh, museum, love her. instantly went click. Well, there's the Pierce <laughs> sisters. <laughs> um, Just pulled that out of the file. I know, in her right? Mind. A little Rolodex went in her brain oh. and she's like, yep, here you go. <laughs> um, and one of the newspaper articles talks about the girl farmers, uh, former fishermen's daughters farm while learning. Mm-hmm. So he didn't do much of the farming, but his five daughters, Amanda, Clara, Ruth, May, and Ellen, owned the farm starting in 1936. Um, they bought the track from the state of Minnesota. And like I said, he rarely helped with the farming Hmm. Um, and they kind of farmed as learned as they went and they farmed several of them farmed well into their late 80s and early 90s they they really liked it they really liked it really kept it going Um, and I don't know what brome is it must be some kind of grass because it says is an excellent grass (laughs) I'm not sure what kind of grass right. that is. Um, but they talk about mixing the alfalfa uh, with the brome um, because the brome roots would take the nitrogen from the alfalfa nodules, and the mixture is the best dairy hay they have what? ever grown. Huh. That sounds fun. So kind They're of, doing experiments and stuff. I know, yeah, it they kind of played with things. Um, they, I did a quick Google. Um, a brome, bromes is a large genus of grasses. Uh, okay. Sure. So it's just grass. Yeah, basically, <laughs> basically grass. grass. It's got huh. its own club of grass. <laughs> A grass um, club. I and like most that. farmers were using lime. They used oh. no lime because about 14 inches under the topsoil was a full layer of limestone pebbles. <gasps> oh. And they found them when they would dig the post holes. Yeah. So I'm wondering if that plays a role in um, what's our archaeological stuff we were just talking about? Oh, the about? kettle rock? The kettle rock. Yeah. I thought that was really interesting. Their farm was. Um, 175 acres of the old St. Nicholas, which was, of course, the um, first settlement in Fremont yeah. County, mm-hmm. um, on the bank of Albert Lee Lake. Wow. So I'm going to guess the kettle played some role yeah, in that, that limestone um, being in there. Or even just that glacier, the sediments left behind by it helped to form that area. Right. Yeah. The article says the girls are beginning to look hopefully and confidently to the development of their farm as indicated by the timbers seasoning under the rafters of their dairy barn. They are of rock elm and were bought at one of Albert Lee's regular Tuesday night sales. They will be made into lumber, eveners, tongues, gates, and the like. And the like. Right. And the and like. like. <laughs> <laughs> and how. Right? <laughs> it also uh, said, Miss Claire operates the tractor and Miss Ruth handles the poultry. <laughs> uh, annually, they start 700 to 3,000 chicks in a log brooder house. Oh, 3,000 wow. chicks back yeah, in that's eight. That's a lot. Where did I say that? In the, in the. Was it the 30s? 1936. That's oh, huge. Geez. Yeah. Like a family-owned yeah, farm. Yeah, sister-owned. I can't yeah, imagine farming with five sisters. <laughs> well, that's kind of funny. The Atchison family, he had five daughters, too. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. And was a fi- and, the, and the fishing. I thought yeah. that was really... Yeah. So there's... Anyway. <laughs> um, uh, one of the things they were asked, what, what pays the best on your farm, do you estimate? The chickens, the sheep, or the cows? And Ms. May said, the pigs... 
Oh, mm. oh I, my goodness. They had six that. spotted Poland China sows and they bred to a Chester White sire. So they had 50 little piglets that oh. they were. So 3,000 chicks, 50 piglets. They also had lambs because um, that brought the best price at Wilson's. Hmm. Um, only the manures from the livestock were used on the fields. Wow. No commercial wow. fertilizer because they tried to distribute last spring, uh, but they were a little late and it was all gone. Mm. Oh. So they used Pretty. strictly, so like organic even. Yeah. They were even organic. Like right. self-contained, really yeah. homegrown. Yeah. I thought, I just, wow. they really wow. fascinated me. make all that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was, and, and he ended up living with one of the daughters until he passed away. Oh, wow. So they took care of him. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I just thought they were very interesting. Um, and one worked, I, I guess I lied the last two, Ellen and Clara, and it was Ellen with an A, E L L A N, hmm. which I'd not. I've seen never before. seen that spelling before. Right? Maybe it was Elan. Ooh, mm. Elan. <laughs> Fancy. Um, she was actually farming until she was seventy-two, and then Clara until oh. she was seventy-seven. Hmm. Wow. I just, I can't imagine. You get into it. I mean, yeah. you just don't stop. My my great uncle John, he was ninety-one when he passed, oh, and he was goodness. driving tractors like that fall before he passed, oh, away. passed away. He was just going all the way. Well, wow. I suppose you yeah. have your daily routine. You kind of mm-hmm. get set, yeah. and you just keep it. Well, and my and my grandpa, he's actually turning ninety one in May, and he's still just this last fall. He was driving the combine around and all oh that too, goodness. and we got a brand new combine, and he was able to figure out how to oh, work it. Nice. <laughs> Gal with a GPS and everything. Uh, not a GPS, but it was one of those newer John Deere ones that has like it sounds different. I don't know <laughs> what what the difference is with the engine. Like it's noticeable when you watch like those um those tractor pulls like on TV. There's like that metallic whine or screech almost when they like really rev yeah. it up, and you can kind of hear that a little bit with these new combines. I again, I don't know what the difference is compared to like some of those older models, but no, he was able to figure out how everything runs. This button does the wow. auger, and this starts the header and all that stuff. It's and it's supposed to screech. Well, I, I think it's part of the I think engine so the yeah, it's like one of the engine sounds oh. that. That it's a just... different hum, maybe. How's that? Not a street, a different hum? I suppose. I don't know. <laughs> a, high, a very high-pitched whistle. Almost. There you go. Oh, okay. There you go. <laughs> that sounds nice. No. That's impressive because I think those things look like cockpits when you, you know, when you get into oh, some of the... Oh, yeah. they're so fun they're to like, drive. <laughs> wow. When I was a kid, I was always like, I want to drive. And then finally, when I was like six or seven was the first time I got to and never looked back. You, you need like a stepladder to get in. <laughs> I need a stepladder you, to get yeah. in. Yeah. You do. You have to. Well, that's why they have like the big ladders going around the tire, and you uh-huh. jump up. This isn't history. We're getting off track. Yeah. <laughs> it's your history. It is. That's, that's true. true. That's that fair. is true. So yeah, I thought the Pierce sisters were they were neat. So happy Happy International Women's History Month with the Pierce sisters Absolutely. and Mrs. Atchison out yeah. fishing six months a well, year. And recently, when we were kind of going through our agriculture exhibit, uh, there was a painting that was in there of the image of the Lemke Farms uh, from on the south of Albert Lee. And that one was painted by a woman. So that's both women and agriculture. Mm-hmm. I'm, can I paint the picture of the painting to you? You can paint the picture <laughs> of the painting to us. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, the front is signed by Sharon Iverson on the bottom right side. The painting itself depicts farmers working with hay. There is a large, loose stack of hay on the left side with a farm contraption being powered by literal horsepower. A group of horses in front of the red building on the right is walking in circles to create the pull needed for the machine on the left. There are two beehive-like stacks of hay behind the building and towards the center of the painting. A smaller building in the distance is on the left. Greenery and trees surround the field, and the sky is a bright blue filled with both fluffy and wispy clouds. Hmm. So uh, I'm, I, I'm curious, did you write that, or did that I come? I did. You did? I did. Very nice. Thank I'm you. I'm thinking you just got um, another job duty added. <laughs> <laughs> That's my art history minor showing through. <laughs> we have so many art pieces in our collection. Yeah. Because... Um, 
I don't. What, what did you ask if you could paint the paint, picture? Of paint the, painting. the picture. <laughs> I'm not going to paint the picture of the painting, <laughs> but I have a painting also. Oh yeah. Um, Sue Anderson, um, who grew up on Northbridge Avenue near the former um, Hammer School, graduated from Albert Lee High School. Um, she has a painting called Threshing Scene yeah. Mural. Which is um, one of my favorites. Oh, it's beautiful. It's it's what about ten feet wide and five feet oh, high. Yeah. It's huge. Oh, and it's in three sections. Three sections. Yeah. It was painted in 1977 at the Skyline Mall cafeteria that was owned by Eleanor and Don Sorensen. Um, so it's three Masonite panels that had been fastened to the back wall of the restaurant. And Sue said, "I arrived early each morning when the restaurant would open to work." When the restaurant would open, I would work on the mural. I applied colors of oil paint to the panels in areas where I would be working and then using a carpenter's putty knife to do the actual painting. This gave texture to the mural. Brushes were used for the people and other small details. And when you look at the fields, you actually feel like the... The, the the texture of the, the, the it's coming out of it's the it's like yeah. popping out it's yes, the impasto it's, is the yeah the you actually port. kind of feel yeah. like you're in the yeah. field it's mm-hmm. really a cool um, technique that mm-hmm. she developed and we have two other paintings of hers three three I know two there are three in that small there's meeting three room. in the mm-hmm. small mm-hmm. meeting room well, I'll have to go take a second <laughs> look <laughs> um, but they all have that technique and yeah. uh, but they're all very different pieces. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's a very Van Gogh kind of technique. It's impasto when you have okay. that. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Risha's just got a new job <laughs> duty, everyone. I'll, I'll take your word for it. <laughs> this art history minor. <laughs> I like that you yeah. threw the miss in there. <laughs> uh, yeah. I like art. Um, which actually kind of would bring me to the next part, which right next to that painting is another painting of hay. Which is a Herfindahl painting that he did specifically for the museum. And inside of that exhibit case are pitchforks, well, a pitchfork and a scythe in there. And it's, it's, it's quite lovely. I never thought I would love paintings of hay. No, that but, one is also very pretty. The yeah. colors in that one are... Um, almost muted, maybe? Is yeah, that... Yeah, in a way. Just um, earthy? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, that's I like that description. Yeah, see, I can, can talk art too. history too. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the people in that there, you see this guy kind of almost like dancing with a pitchfork the way he's kind of scooping up the hay, and uh, that was likely modeled after somebody in the area because he would take models from Albert Lee and the surrounding areas to um, paint the people in his paintings. So, yeah, I don't know he, if this is right or not. Hmm. Um, somewhere I found that that one is called Midsummer Harvest? Oh, Does really? Does that sound... I could see it. I, I haven't seen it documented anywhere. I think that was probably in our original tour guide book when, we, oh, when I found sure. it. Oh, sure. Um, I kind of came across that yesterday, actually, as I was working on uh-huh. that. So I thought, I don't know if that... It, it's it, got to yeah. be it, Midsummer yeah. Harvest. I don't know if that's the name he gave it or... Or if somebody else titled yeah. it. Yeah. No, that would fit, I would think. Yeah. And we have totally redone um, the case beneath um, Sue Anderson's mm-hmm. painting that has, it's loaded with miniatures. Yeah, um, little hand, replicas. Handmade yeah. wooden mi- miniatures. My Fred Shoemaker did those. Right. Yeah. And now all labeled. So, mm-hmm. so like when are. you bring kids in, they can actually go, oh, that's what that is. It's, it's a cultivator. Yes. Or a, that, that was used for hay. It's yeah. not like trying to figure out what each piece was for (laughs) yeah very cool but lloyd herfindahl himself was born in emmons minnesota the one who did that what was that mid-autumn harvest what did you call it midsummer harvest summer oh no that makes more sense um (laughs) (laughs) lloyd herfindahl he was born in emmons in minnesota during 1922 and eventually became an internationally renowned artist I wish I could have met him, but he he passed the year I was born. Hey, um, me too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my God, you guys are the same age. Apparently. Wow. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> what? No way. <laughs> no. He was kind of a character too. Yeah. I think if you okay. 
if you look if you if we look back on some stories and stuff about yes. him, he was an interesting gentleman. Oh, I love hearing people talk about him recently in a conversation with somebody who knew him like in the flesh. I love that. Um, he was described to me as being someone wearing overalls and chasing a loose cow that had wandered off his home farm in Albert Lee. <laughs> With his red tie? Well, I, exactly. I'm like, <laughs> I've been picturing him in his specific red tie. He wouldn't wear just any red tie. It was a very specific one. Because I, I know when you first told me about the red tie, I said it's like Garrison Kaler who's wearing uh, red socks yeah, right. all the time. So yeah, yeah. You always, I, I guess I would think it was strange if Garrison didn't have red socks and, and Lloyd, Lloyd didn't have a red tie. Yeah, yeah. He, I mean, he himself was a big historian. And, and um, was had a love specific to Norway, which kind of tied to why he loved that red tie so much, because um, it was his heritage. And from what I have seen, he didn't really he he always kind of sneaks a little bit of, of it into his paintings. I feel like, but he doesn't always flaunt it like Norway in that heritage. Okay. And in the murals, um, he seems to kind of stay more true to the facts than necessarily going to his really big love of Norway. Yeah. Um, in our Freeborn County mural, which is the Freeborn County history that he did. It's so full of our history. There is a lot to unpack in that one mural. Um, but in keeping with our agriculture theme, I wanted to just kind of share some of the pieces of agriculture that are in there. Uh, he started with the Ice Age in that mural. It, it's, it is an interesting mural. Yeah, and it goes all the way to uh, 1984 because it was then um, installed in 1985. And uh, so it kind of starting back towards the early and then going up, it has Native Americans harvesting wild rice uh, and oxen being one of the first sources of farm power. And this is a big kind of powerful uh, image in the center of the piece, the two oxen. Uh, and then there's also threshing time. Again, the hay. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> More hay. Uh, <laughs> it has lunch in the field, uh, numerous farms appearing in the rustic rural area. Yeah, he 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 has some interesting pieces that are spread throughout the community, and I think, I know for us, there's several of our exhibit cases that he volunteered oh, to yes. paint, mm -hmm. and I believe there's several murals throughout the community also that mm -hmm. he was commissioned or volunteered. We do have quite a collection in yes. of originals in our museum, but there's more around town. Right? Yeah, they just kind of pop up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He he yeah. was he's. He had it going on. Mm -hmm. Lloyd Herfindahl. <laughs> they pop up. What a nice wrap up. <laughs> <to> <laughs> <from history. laughs> pop up. On that oh note, goodness. yeah. Have a bowl of popcorn, Risha. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>